Today, we're going to be looking at the remote building capabilities of the Garden framework. Garden is a development environment for backend programming, and it takes care of building your services, spinning up your stack, running your tests, and keeping everything up to date in real time as you make changes to your code. We will walk through configuring a simple Garden project for use with a remote Kubernetes dev cluster with in-cluster building enabled. And then we will dive into some of the core development and testing workflows of backend programming, just to give you a feel for what those are like uh, when using Garden with in-cluster building. We're going to be using the Garden Example Vault project, which we've shared on GitHub. Here on the top right hand side, you can see the project level Garden config, where I've got two environments, the local environment, which uses a local Kubernetes cluster, and a remote environment, which here uses our uh, internal dev cluster uh, running remotely. And it's also configured to use the cluster Docker build mode, which means remote building, which also means that I don't have to have Kubernetes running on my laptop as I make this recording. Now, let's go ahead and run the garden dev command with a remote environment and with the vote service deployed with hopper loading enabled. What this is going to do is it's going to build all of my services, run database migrations, and deploy the services in dependency order and run the tests, resulting in me having a uh, fully tested and deployed stack to play with here. As you can tell, I've already deployed these services. I just did that to, to shave a few seconds of time of this demo here. All right, so now let's open the dashboard. And on the stack graph tab here, we can see a dependency diagram of all that it took to spin up the stack. Now you can also see why Garden is able to spin up the entire stack with one command. It's because it's aware of the dependency structure of you know, what needs to be built before what, uh, what service has to be deployed before what service is deployed, what database migrations have to be run, and so forth. And this is how we get from, from zero to full stack uh, in one command. Now let's just go ahead and break something uh, and see what happens. So before I jump into the API service here, let's just look at the two end user services in the system. We have the vote service, which enables the user to vote for tabs versus spaces. And then we have the result service, which displays the results. Um, the vote service pings the API service uh, with the vote, and the API service then stores that into Redis as a kind of message queue. And then the J worker service uh, is kind of on a loop, draining the Redis queue and inserting the records into Postgres. And then the result service reads from Postgres. So, you know, it's kind of a pipeline from, vote, from the vote service to the result service like that, going through a few services on the way. So, um, for the vote service to work, obviously the API service has to work. Which, so we have an integration test verifying that the API service is up and running. So, let's change the status of this simple endpoint here, that it returns from 200 to 600, which is wrong. This won't break the unit test for the API service, but it will break the integration test for the vote service. And we're actually running integration tests on each file change here. Um, so you will see that the vote integ test will fail. Bam. Um, it's actually really nice to get this feedback <laughs> before CI, because it means that we don't have to you know, stand up, get a coffee, come back in 10 minutes, and, and rinse and repeat. We can actually catch uh, these errors during development and, and save time and, and frustration. But of course, um, running your entire integration test suite on every file change is a bit expensive. So what people do with Garden in these cases is that they set up um, a set of environments. So they might set up like a, a light development environment and a full development environment, and then they will conditionally enable and disable uh, test suites. So you might like have a, you know, a subset of your integration test suite that, that you might run on every uh, every file change, and then you might have, you know, you might slowly move to the heavier sets as as you as you get closer to committing and pushing. Um, and the idea here is that we really should be running more of our tests before CI and getting some of that feedback earlier um, because it just keeps us happy and productive and, uh, and nobody likes having to wait for CI uh, for every little thing. Now let's go back and fix this, turn it back to 200 and see what happens. So as you can see on the left there, the API service is rebuilt, then it's going to be redeployed. And we don't even have to run the intact test for vote again because we already have a cast result uh, a cast result for when the version of API was what it was, and we were just reverting to a previous change. So um, this kind of demonstrates that, um, that Garden has a clever caching mechanism for test results based on the underlying source versions of the modules. So if you're able to granularize your, your integration tests by, um, by a module like this, you can, you can actually get some nice performance gains in some cases. 
Now, let's do some hot loading. Um, we'll open this file here from the vote service. Um, tabs versus spaces. Okay, let's make this into tabs versus aces. Uh, aces. What's going to happen now is that the file system watcher will sync the changed file into a sidecar container that's a, uh, sitting next to the app container inside the pod, uh, which is then picked up by the view development server, which will use hot module reloading to sync it directly into the browser window, giving us this nice local feeling front end feedback loop, which is very, very fast. Uh, and I, I just have to add that like all of the stuff that I've been showing you is running quite a bit faster remotely than it would have been if I'd been running this whole stack uh, on my old, well, somewhat aging laptop here. And it's really nice to, uh, to kind of have the best of both, both worlds like this. Uh, feedback loops that are as fast as local, but with a system that's as powerful as CI. Um, and indeed, the difference between the development environment and, and the CI environment is, is, uh, is next to none here. And actually, the way we at Garden Integration test the framework is by setting up a Garden project. So um, we, we kind of want to shrink the gap between, between testing in CI and, and testing during development. And so in both of these cases, whether it is um, you know, getting pre-CI test feedback during development or, or, or having these very quick uh, front-end or back-end uh, feedback loops to see your changes reflected, um, I think I've shown here that we really can get uh, our nice fast feedback loops from the old monolith phase back and 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 even do better all it needs is the right tooling and um yeah i hope this has been informative um, there are a lot of a lot of good guides on docs.garden.io to get you started and we invite you to also join our community slack on the kubernetes slack and we'd love to talk to you